What's up BTS? It's your host Michaela, and I'm here to break down the top 10 celebrities who were fired for asking for more money. At number 10 we have Daniel Kim and Grace Park who acted in the rebooted CBS action crime drama series Hawaii Five-O from the start of 2010. For seven long years the duo played their characters Chin Ho Kelly and Konu Kalokoa until they were forced off the show in 2017 because of a contract dispute. Reportedly Daniel and Grace were both looking to receive equal pay that their co-stars Alex O'Loughlin and Scott Kahn were obtaining. It was stated that CBS would not waiver their final decision and set a disclosed amount of 10-15% to 15 lower pay grade than their castmates. Eventually CBS went on to write Daniel and Grace out of their show in the 8th season and in it their removal was addressed in true drama show fashion during the premiere. Funnily enough though it's said that the drama off screen was even juicier. Despite the network issuing glowing statements in regards to their departed stars, Grace was all but thrilled when Peter Lenkoff, her former showrunner, released a tweet with indications that Grace had left the series to focus on family. Grace detailed the occurrence by explaining how the situation felt very charged to her, as well as that she did not feel it was right of Peter to make a statement on her behalf, regardless of whether or not he had good intentions. She finalized by informing Deadline that she cared about Peter as an individual, but that she did not leave the show because of what he implied. At number 9 we have Valerie Harper's self-titled sitcom where she starred alongside Jason Bateman with high spirits due to the fact that the show's ratings were increasing. Valerie was said to be headed in a promisingly strong direction for its third season and Harper decided this was as good as any time to inquire about a raise. In accordance with People by Valerie's third year, she was contracted to receive $56,750 per episode with an additional 10% of the show's adjusted gross profits. Rather, Valerie requested there be a new contract drawn of 100,000 and 35% of added profits instead. When the studio refused to play into Valerie's demands, she pulled out an old ruse that once worked for her 12 years prior as the star of Rhoda. For this one, her request for a raise was denied. She denied showing up for work until she got what she wanted. However, her holdout tactic was not successful the following time as Valerie's production team agreed to terms of a new contract worth $65,000 per episode with 12.5% of profits. This is what sparked Valerie's return to set but she was let go after filming a single episode. As a result, the Valerie writers killed off her character and rebranded the show as Valerie's Family for the third season. The following season, the show got a new name once more called The Hogan Family and while the sitcom maintained its popularity without its original star, Valerie's karma came in full circle when she successfully sued production on the grounds of wrongful dismissal. At number 8 we have the crazy saga of Marcus Chong and The Matrix. His story comes after the success of The Matrix when the film creators had pitched for a double sequel. The writing slash director team of the Wachowskis initially wanted to reprise Marcus with a reported offer of $250,000, but Marcus was seeking a whopping million dollars, a seemingly bizarre negotiation tactic which presumably later backfired fired and got him removed from the franchise. He was killed off between the first and final movies. Allegedly after asking for a million, Marcus's lawyer delivered an ultimatum to the Wachowskis in a letter. In it, a matching sum of $500,000 with added bonuses and promises to receive press premiere guarantees was offered, or oppositely, Marcus would do the movies for free. Following the latter, Marcus apparently publicly added that he was being threatened and spoke on the behalf of Andy Wachowski on a call, which brought about more drama and confusion. At one point he was reportedly taken into custody for making threats and later unsuccessfully sued the production company and distributors of The Matrix. At number 7 we have Muppet star Steve Whitmire. Despite there being several reported reasonings for the Kermit the Frog voice actor and puppeteer's acts from Disney, the big deal breaker was supposedly money. Apparently one of the reasons given for Steve's dismissal was his refusal to work on a specific project because of an alleged contract dispute. However, Steve told The Hollywood Reporter that he was a casualty of a classified contract dispute between AFTRA and Disney Labor Relations. According to THR, Disney and the Muppets studio though, Steve's negotiation tactics pushed back production for many years, even going as far back as the Sesame Street days of voicing Ernie and Kermit. A source informed Gizmodo that he was let go for demanding too much money and not for focusing on the Muppets after Sesame Street. At number 6 we have former Family Matter actress Jamie Foxworth. Now there's no hard confirmation from the cast nor crew as to why Jamie was ever dismissed, but there have been so many rumors stringed from her role's strange removal on the show, where her then character Judy exits the scene up the stairs in season 4 and never comes back down. 
According to FM's co-creator William Bickley, Jamie's exit came about because of budget considerations, but many allege that her mother was behind the actress's dismissal. A mysteriously reported BET article hinted that the responsibility should be placed on her mother and then manager Gwen Fox in light of Jamie's contract not being renewed for demanding more money. The position Gwen held makes the story plausible, but regardless, Jamie's career never fully recovered from the early setback. Still, Jamie has kept a pretty lighthearted and humorous attitude about the entire ordeal. At number 5 we have Crispin Glover and why he never returned for the Back to the Future sequel. Crispin had switched out his story numerous times, but one standing point was the studio not meeting his pay demands. He explained in an AV Club interview how he was offered $150,000 to reprise his George McFly role, but this was far less than what co-stars Tom Wilson and Leah Thompson were working for. In the opinion of Crispin, the producers were trying to force him out and punished him with physically uncomfortable scenes for questioning the script. Crispin claimed he would have experienced whatever discomfort needed if he was being properly compensated. Therefore, when the actor tried to stand at negotiation, the higher ups apparently lowered the amount even further, to an alleged $25,000 instead. Crispin chalked this up to them not wanting to work with him, yet The Hollywood Reporter featured a slightly different spin where they spoke about Crispin not liking the ideal script so he demanded $100 million to take the role back. According to Crispin though, this alleged fabrication was merely a quote campaign smear tactic that he was supposedly asked to receive the same salary which Michael J. Fox was reigning in at the time. At number 4 we have crime scene investigation actors Georgia Fox and George Eads. The two stars of CSI faced intense behind the scenes drama while filming the show because they were both eventually removed after allegedly refusing to show up for filming. In accordance with people both actors were dissatisfied with the results of their proposed raises of approximately 20000 per episode. When the actors attempted to hold out for more they got snipped out the equation. CBS's co-president Leslie Moonves made a point to state that a contract is a contract and that the company was maintaining the future of the network television business. Although there is a happier ending for this one, as both Georgia and George were invited to take their jobs back, but their rehire came with some new ground rules. The raises initially offered were revoked, resulting in the actors' negotiation tactics, costing them an approximate $1.76 billion. Big yikes. Even worse, George once claimed he wasn't even being petty and that he merely overslept when he didn't show up to work, rather than the hinted monetary gain story that was originally created. At number 3 we have iconic Disney star Hilary Duff who was a staple for all early 2000s preteens with her crimped hair and then sweet style. The reason why Hilary and Paolo's Lizzie McGuire 2 manifestation didn't play out in real life was because of reported money disputes. Without Hilary there would surely be no Lizzie and apparently Hilary wanted more than what she was making then. According to Entertainment Weekly, the LM franchise closed off when Susan Duff, Hilary's then momager, refused Disney's deal for a sequel. Reportedly, Hillary was offered $500,000 in bonus for the second film if the first film surpassed $50 million. This was said to be a huge increase from the $100,000 bonus Disney originally offered the pair, along with part of a $4 million offer for its sequel, quote, against 4% of the studio's gross for the film. In full, Hillary's Lizzie payday exceeded this, but her mother expected the bonus to come immediately as opposed to waiting. In retaliation, Disney withdrew their deal completely while effectively axing the Lizzie McGuire franchise. In light of the incident, Susan said to Entertainment Weekly how Disney tried to quote bully them into what they wanted and was unsuccessful. So in turn, she and her daughter turned away from a sequel while the company ditched an entire series. At number 2 we have Walking Dead, Maggie's actress Lauren Cohen. Lauren's character was surely a staple in the WD franchise for nearly a decade, but in 2018 AMC had to complicatedly decide to give in to the actress then contract demands or remove her from her role. In her Entertainment Weekly interview, Lauren admitted that she was taken aback by her negotiation, which indicated that maybe it was time to leave. She recalls being baffled and feeling like it was just not a fit anymore due to her and AMC not lining up in so many ways. According to The Hollywood reporter Lauren was already actively seeking new jobs around this time and was receiving multiple. As a result, she was no longer a part of the Walking Dead series, but the final decision to let her go was unusually a huge departure from that of the comic book series on which the show bases itself, though not entirely unlikely. However, Lauren could potentially see the return of her character Maggie in the future despite her character being offed, as her ending was technically left up in the air. 
At number one, we have Iron Man actor Terrence Howard, whose leave is somewhat of a sticky situation. It's difficult to say for certain if he was fired or pushed out, but no doubt his demise in the Iron Man franchise had the same end result. While Terrence starred in the first Iron Man film and was reportedly making more than leading actor Robert Downey Jr., he was excluded from the second, and apparently there are several reasons. The main one stemmed from an alleged battle over pay. Despite him being the big bill topper in the first film, Robert Downey soon caught the title of the world's highest paid actors for Forbes for three consecutive years, and moved into Terrence's money spot by the time of the second film. Terrence's top spot of $3.5 in pay supposedly stemmed from the combination of risk associated with the Robert Downey bets at the time, as well as his Oscar nomination for Hustle & Flow. In Terrence's explanation, the reason behind Robert's earnings so much in the subsequent Iron Man films is alleged because the studio was borrowing from Terrence to pay Robert, and he further claimed that he was set to accumulate $8 million for the second movie. Instead, Marvel Studios supposedly reworked their offered contract and reduced it to one million with plans of using the remaining dough to pay Robert. Finally, once Terrence pushed back, Marvel rumoredly closed their deal entirely and hired Don Cheadle in place of Terrence. That concludes today's BTS. Again, I've been your host Mikhail and I'll see you all again really soon.